Good afternoon. I am Andrea Chisholm with the Midday News. A special welcome if you're watching on onespotmedia.com. Two correctional officers are dead following a murder-suicide this morning on Waltham Park Road in St. Andrew. They have been identified as Staff Officer Patrick Gobbins and his wife, Ruling Gobbins. Reports are that sometime after 7 o'clock, passers-by saw Mrs. Gowans running after being chased by her husband. She was cornered and shot in the head. Mr. Gowans then turned the weapon on himself and both died at the scene. In the meantime, the Jamaica Federation of Corrections says the murder-suicide is a wake-up call for the government to provide support for officers who are in need of psychiatric intervention. Chairman Arlington Turner says there are no psychiatrists to treat with issues affecting members. He adds that trouble was brewing between the man and the woman. What we have now is actually non-existent as it relates to officers treating with eval psychiatric evaluation. Because if an officer has internal or external issues to treat with and need these kind of evaluation, there is no one to treat with them. Indeed, we have a wellness fund that tries their best to treat with some of the issues, but it's really, as I said, non-existent. So I can't speak to it. And I say it before and I say it again, this is a wake-up call for the department to treat with it. As a union, we'll be pushing harder to get some tangible intervention in relation to how these issues are addressed. Because this one this morning has been going for quite some time. Many of us knew very well about it in relation to how this individual was treating with the issue. So I'm really, really sad that it reaches this stage this morning. The Westmoreland police have charged a student from Grange Hill High in connection with the fatal stabbing of a security guard at the institution. The 17-year-old is 11th grader, is an 11th grader, and is scheduled to appear in the Westmoreland Parish Family Court on Thursday, April 11. Two other individuals are being sought for questioning. They are known as Kemoy and Palmer, both of Grange Hill addresses. 44-year-old Clifton Lumley, who was attached to Alpha Security Services, died on March 30, a day after the attack. Two young men reportedly gained access to the school's compound, and Mr. Lumley and the Dean of Discipline asked them to leave. They refused, and the police were alerted. Shortly after the police left, the young men returned and stabbed Mr. Lumley. A 34-year-old man has been charged in relation to the seizure of narcotics at the Norman Manley International Airport on Sunday. He has been identified as Damien O'Brien, a chef from Williamsfield, Manchester. TVJ News understands that Mr. O'Brien arrived on a flight from Trinidad and during security checks, the cocaine was found in his luggage. He was charged with possession of 2.5 kilograms of, of cocaine and importing cocaine. He pleaded guilty when he appeared before the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court on Monday and was fined $200,000 or nine months imprisonment on each charge. The drug has an estimated street value of $3 million. The Supreme Court is expected to hand down its decision on Friday in the parliamentary opposition's challenge to the National Identification and Registration Act. The ruling is scheduled for 9.30. Attorneys representing the People's National Party and the government made submissions to a three-member panel led by Chief Justice Brian Sykes. The opposition's legal team, which is headed by Michael Hilton, argued that various sections of the act are unconstitutional. NIDS is slated to begin in 2020 and is intended to capture and store identity information on all Jamaicans. Each person will get a nine-digit national identification number. Jamaica's health authorities are on high alert in the wake of news that measles is spreading rapidly in the United States. This was confirmed by Chief Medical Officer Dr. Jacqueline Bisesa McKenzie. On Monday, the Wall Street Journal reported that the number of measles cases in the U.S. since the start of the year increased to 465 from 387 the previous week. Dr. Bisesa McKenzie said local health teams are on alert given the high number of travelers from the U.S. to Jamaica. We're 
always concerned about measles because measles has been out. Um, we have not had any cases of measles in Jamaica. Jamaica has been measles-free for a number of years. So therefore, our main concern from a public health perspective is to detect any cases that may be coming in and to contain it early. So we are always on the lookout. We have a fever and rash surveillance that is continuous, that all cases of fever and rash are checked to make sure that it is not measles. So we are always concerned, and with the outbreak that has been reported in the United States, which are, you know, we have a lot of persons traveling from the U.S., we are even more vigilant at our point of entry to detect any cases. Measles is a highly contagious disease that can result in serious complications such as pneumonia and swelling of the brain. New York's mayor has declared a public health emergency and all residents in affected areas have been told to get vaccinated or face a fine. And the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, has linked the measles outbreak in New York, Rockland County and New Jersey to people returning from Israel where there is a large outbreak. If one is exposed to measles, the CDC says it infects up to 90% of unvaccinated people. The virus can live in the air for up to two hours after an infected person coughs or sneezes. Another work scam has come to light. This time, persons are targeting the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, saying there's a vacant position for data collection officers. The advertisement has been circulating on the popular messaging application WhatsApp. The ministry is appealing to the public that the recruitment drive is false and it did not originate from any of its regional bodies or agencies. If the ministry is recruiting people, they say notifications are usually given through media organizations or through official channels. And time now for a preview of what's coming up in this evening's health report. In this edition of the health report, we look at constipation in children. In children, we have to strike a balance because with children, they are growing. They still need calcium. They still need iron. They still need these nutrients. So a delicate balance has to be struck so that the nutrients is available for their growth, but at the same time, they are having foods that do not con contribute to the constipation. That's the health report this evening in primetime news. And now for today's healthy living tip. Drink two to four extra glasses of water a day, unless your doctor told you to limit fluids for another reason. Try warm liquids, especially in the morning. Add fruits and vegetables to your diet. Exercise most days of the week and don't ignore the urge to use the bathroom. And in sports, Wilma's Girls and Merle Grove will contest the final of the Issa Jamaica Hockey Federation Under-19 competition after semi-final victories on Tuesday at the Mona Hockey Field. Wilma's were convincing in the second semi-final, beating Denby High 2-0. Alia James scored the first goal for Wilma's after 19 minutes. The second goal came on minute 48 from Chanel McKnight. The first semi-final saw Merle Grove beating 2018 winners Alpha, courtesy of a goal from Tamian Ashmead. My girls played spiritedly. We stuck to the game plan. We knew that, Mer that Alpha was a running team. We had strategized for them how to outplay them and what system to use, and we executed according to plan. On the boys' side, Excelsior set up a date with Denby after both teams had convincing victories in their semifinals. Excelsior beat KC 4-0 with double strikes from Sean D. Pettigrew and Shamar Gordon. Pettigrew got goals in the 9th and 38th minutes and Gordon in the 11th and 41st minutes. We, um, we dismantle all the other teams and we look, we're looking good going into the finals. And that's the Midday News. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Join us at 7 for the Primetime News Package. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, good afternoon.